Oh, man. Oof. It's a talent as well to know how it should sound after producing it. If you only have an acoustic sound of your idea, there are a lot of artists that just sing the songs, don't write the songs. And immediately there's a lot less creativity, I think. It is crazy how she can hear something and already know, oh, this should be made from this. Hi guys, Yuri here again, welcome to YB Plays Music and welcome back to the Swifties because I'm reacting to another video regarding Taylor Swift. Now, you might know, but my silver member, Tal, is the one that suggested this on Patreon. Thank you so much for the suggestion. Like always, I'm first posting this on Patreon, the full version, and then a couple of weeks later, I will post this on YouTube as well as a cut-up version of this. The video itself is not an official video. It is basically a compilation video that Tal himself put together for me. I don't know exactly if it's specifically for me, but if it is, then thank you so much for the, for the effort. But this video basically shows a lot of clips of Taylor Swift throughout the years together with her producers, how she writes her songs in the studio or in general. So I don't really know how many different clips there are going to be. Uh, I know she's been active for quite a couple of years, so I assume there are going to be a lot of different clips. How long are these clips separately? I have no idea. But this whole video is pretty long. It's almost two and a half hours, so I'm not going to pause in between. I'm just gonna say what's on my mind uh, during the video. Okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, you might see that I cut it up so that it's uh, much shorter than um, what I'm reacting to uh, in its entirety. But that said, guys, let's check it out. Tal did ask me uh, if I was open for this because it's such a long video and it's not an official video. Uh, but I said, yeah, sure. It sounds interesting to know how an artist, a mainstream artist in that, how her thought process is and how her process is in general with writing songs. Let's check this video out. Let's start with a frame of her singing. Isn't this the guy from, uh, oh, I forgot the name of the band. Uh, it's too late, apologize. One Republic. Is this a singer of One Republic? It says Ryan Tedder wrote songs for Beyonce, Adele and Maroon 5. Worked with Taylor on the songs I Know Places and Welcome to New York. Let's just start the video, uh, 2 hours 25 minutes. Here we go, Tal. I hope you enjoy it. Let's find out if we will. Here we go. No artist I've ever written with in my career has contributed more of the actual song than Taylor Swift to a writing session. That's interesting. I actually felt bad for my share. So this is Ryan. She'll send you a voice memo the night before saying, so I just sat down and I was thinking, and she's literally talking on the voice memo like this. Or is this Ryan actually the singer of One Republic? The, e the easiest answer is oh, that this is the guy she is from a the folklore brilliant video. songwriter, which mm -hmm. is the title that is given to a lot of people, but very few of them are. There's not many people in her position that actually do it like she does she she wants to tell a story she sits down and writes it i think the core of what completely separates her she doesn't need anything or anyone to craft a, a, a song okay that's a talent because a lot of artists don't write their own songs it's always been evident to the fans but swifties person who can sit down and take themselves, put it into a song. It's so simple, yet there's so few people who can do it. Yeah, it is not easy. She's a songwriter in the truest, truest sense. The best artists can do two things. Number one, they have an untapped, unfettered access to their emotions, and they are completely vulnerable at all times. Taylor's one of those artists. Okay. Number two, they can write their own hit. So this is Ryan. So over the years, a lot of people have asked me to so sort of describe Taylor. my songwriting process from beginning to end. My answer is always that it happens differently every time, and that's why I'm still so in love with songwriting. Yeah. 
what I've done here is shown you three different examples of um, the beginning stages of these songs. I sent this voice memo to Ryan Tedder because I'd always wanted to work with him. I wanted to send him the idea that I was working on before we went into the studio, just in case he wrote back and said, I can't stand that. I want to work on something else. Think of something else. I just sat down with the piano, put my phone on top of the piano and just kind of explained to him where I wanted to go with the song. We ended up recording the song the next day and it ended up being on the what? record called uh, I Know Places. That's crazy. In one day. So this is that recording. With the pedal pushed down all the all the way, but I think it's on purpose. I know places. Okay, so back to the second verse now or intro. Days, Don't know the song. But that's basically just okay. Yeah, 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 everybody's like trying to get in and like ruin a love or whatever. And then the chorus would just go to that major and just like be like, oh, it wouldn't be a piano thing. It'd be like, mm, st mm, st mm, like very like beat. So she has a good idea how it should sound. Okay, yeah. So that was that memo. Oh, 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 very peculiar rhythm. I don't know the song. Cause they got the cages, they got the boxes. So it's still building the same riff. And we run, they be. I know places we won't be found. Oh, I like it though. I, Man. I, I know places. Lights flash and we'll run for the fence. Okay. I, I like how it builds upon that same riff a lot of the times, actually. It is a talent. And we run! Oof. The thing is, it's a talent as well to know how it should sound after producing it. That is not always easy if you only have an acoustic sound of your idea. It's a talent to really know how it how you want it to sound with all this extra percussion, extra sounds, effects, but I like it. It's a good one. I was also about to say, it's crazy, there are a lot of artists that actually don't write their own songs, that there is another writer involved with it that doesn't get the credit enough i think a lot of artists that just sing the songs don't write the songs and immediately there's a lot less of creativity i think with them let's see where this is where this goes this is another way i've written songs recently this is a song that i did with jack antonoff he pulled out his phone and goes oh I'm, i made this amazing track the other day it's so cool i love these guitar sounds oh so jack made For something me, and immediately i could hear this finished song <laughs> in my head like i said that's a talent so he sent it to me i was on tour <laughs> she was on tour Okay, so this is an idea called I Wish You Would. It's kind of about this guy who's like, he's driving down the street in the middle of the night and he's passing the ex-girlfriend's house. Very dramatic. This track is this. I hope you like this. So she made something. It's 2 a.m. In your car. Windows down, past my street. Memories start. Wish you were right here, right now. It's all good. I wish you would. Do you like it? Oh, so, huh. so the track that she got was actually what Jack made and she sung on top of it, or? It's basically the same thing. Man, the demo that she got from Jack and this doesn't sound that, that much different, actually. It is crazy how she can hear something and already know, oh, this should be made from this. <clears throat> Let's listen on. <clears throat> oh, 
I was also wondering, like, is is 1989? Is this her the year she w- was born in? It would make sense, I think. Uh, and what is DLX? I don't know if this this is a stupid question, but so what's about what's now about to be shown? Do me a favor and help me welcome and show appreciation to Taylor Swift. Okay, this is a show. Well, Man, she looks excited. totally different there. I'm so excited you guys are here. I'm I'm honored that you'd want to be here to talk about how we made 1989. Oh, that's the name of an album I have as been well. With this demo producer named Nathan Chapman, I loved the demos that we made together. Uh, Scott was like, "Well, you know what? We're gonna." We're going to put you with producers who have actually made albums before. And I was <laughs> like, but this guy is so great. And he's like, but has he made an album before? And I was like, well, technically no. She has a good feeling about him. So after a lot of um, begging and pleading, I got my label to, Man. to let Nathan Chapman. She must be persistent then. My entire first album. And he has worked on every single album that I've done since, including 1999. Wow. Man, she really has to know exactly what she wanted. I made my second <coughs> album, Fearless, which ended up being kind of the one that was the breakthrough album. The first time I ever got to hold a Grammy in my hand and then drop it in the press room, which was really <laughs> embarrassing for me. Okay. It was like a really accurate snapshot of my life at that time. After that, I had a lot of people who would say, oh, she's an 18-year-old girl. There's no way that she actually carried her weight in those writing sessions. And that was a really harsh criticism, I felt, because you know, there was no way I could prove them wrong other than to write my entire next record solo. So that's what I did. Wow, that's crazy. We were like, go, string section, whoa! Like, but then we'd have banjo on the next track, and you're like, what's going on? Um, but it was us just trying new things. Yeah, being creative, as I think it should be. The next record read, a few months in, they started coming to me as pop melodies, and I just embraced it. I just wanted to see what it was like to work with Max Martin. I called him, and he came over to my house, and I said, I love what you do. I'm a little scared, but I'm not really that scared because I think it could be great. I'm not going to second guess this. This is just a gut feeling. I think it's going to work. We went and we did. I think there's a lot of that too, gut feelings. I knew you were trouble and, and we were trusting never, those. Back together. I got nominated for album of the year with Red. Going up to it, you know, everybody comes up to you and they're like, oh, you got this. You're going to win. You're going to win. And I wish they wouldn't do that because mm. you don't know if you're going to win. And you never know that. Very well win, and someone else very well did. And the album of the year goes to Random Access Memories, Daft Punk. <laughs> oh come on! For a second there, I kind of thought we had it, and we didn't. Can't have it all. I went home, and I cried a little bit, and I got in and out burger and ate a lot. We don't make music so we can like win a lot of awards, but you have to take your cues from somewhere. If you're going to continue to evolve, mm-hmm. you can decide like, oh, they're wrong. They all voted wrong. I'm going to do the same thing over again. Second, you can be like, I'm going to go up on the stage and take the mic from whoever did win it. No, did she actually do that? Or third, you can say. I don't think so. Maybe they're right. Okay. So I went to bed and I woke up at four in the morning. It's called 1989. I'm calling it a pop record. I'm starting tomorrow. And so that's wow. what I did. I went in with Max. I asked him to co-executive produce it with me. And with Red, I had learned that I really do like collaborating with different producers. But I think with 1989, I decided I was going to narrow down the list. Maybe four or five people that I'd always wanted to work with. Max and I were going to oversee it. And hmm. Now I'm going to tell you how we made the album. Wow. So, Blank Space is a song that I wrote as kind of like a satire. You know, you're sitting at an award show and there's like you're there's like you know there's going to be a joke about you being a serial dater. I kind of like sat back and yeah. thought about how complex this character was that they'd drawn up for me. Jet setting all over the world, collecting men. She's so clingy once she gets them, but she can get any of them, but then they run because she's so crazy. She like moves in day two, like crazy stuff like that. This is amazing. It's very creative. They planted the idea. They 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 made the story actually from for the song then, partially. I have the original voice memo of me playing it for them. There's also a part of the song that goes like, I've got a blank space, baby, and I'll write your name. Oh, okay. Yes. And you'll hear Max go, oh my God, I love it. That's so annoying. They're all going to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. 
meet you where you've been. I could show you incredible things. Who are all these people sitting there? I go off into a corner and start writing all the lyrics for the rest of the song. I mean, she, she already got a good portion of it. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> What's that? A lot of those lines were from just things I had come up with in the past year, like, darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream, and lines like that, like I had kind of come up with. That's actually pretty smart to note lines that you remember from somewhere. That, like, ding. I'm gonna play the song afterwards so you can hear what all this is. Um, but that is that came from a Mellotron. We did a lot of troubleshooting for mics, and the main mic that Max and Shellback and I used was the Neumann M49, and Neumann. it just sounded better than everything else. Yeah, so. pretty well-known brand. So, if you don't know, guys, I have reacted to her whole tour. Um, no, not her old tour, but her concert. Where was it again? I forgot. Uh, but if you haven't seen that video, the link will be somewhere, somewhere in the description. And this song was in there too. It's like the most complicated track, probably that we'll talk about. I'm not used to writing to track. Writing to track. I also never tried that. This is a track that Jack Antonoff sent to me. I got it, and I got on a plane and I'm listening to it. I'm just like mumbling melodies because the song came to me immediately. Man, I mean. We're going to dive into his world now. I have seen him get out an old dictaphone and record a bus passing us. <laughs> like, it's just, it's a, it's very different than anything I've experienced. Yeah, that is different. Was that the track that we heard before? This is the exact voice memo I sent him, so it's kind of embarrassing. It's called um, Out of the Woods. When I sing... Remember, remember. Like that's like a vocal echo, but I'm gonna sing it like yeah, I'm not gonna get it. <laughs> she already <laughs> knows how it should sound. That gremlin sound. So this is me playing it on my laptop and recording it with my iPhone. What I'm singing. I recognize it. Okay, yeah, get what she means there. It is a cool idea how she did this. Good. I hope you like it. <laughs> <laughs> so the main snare is a combo of white noise that he got through blowing out the EMI board, clapping his hands, and no joke, oh. um, dropping his gear bag. He mic'd that up uh -huh. on the floor. Cool. <laughs> You're constantly just feeling like... Judged. Are we going to make it to next week? The live... Of a celebrity. And so that is what I wrote the song about, and now I'll play it for you. Her mental struggle with this. So this is the finished song. I never really actively listened to a lot of her lyrics, uh, I have to be honest. So it's a different way for me of listening to her. The next song that I'm going to play for you is a different collaborator because I just want I want you to hear something from each person. All the different producers. I had this idea of like, um, you know, when you're in love, it's fragile. It's kind of like the first thing people want to do when, when they hear that people are in love is just kind of try to ruin it. A lot of other people would just congratulate you, I feel like. But I think it feels different if you're a celebrity. What would I say if I met someone really awesome and they were like, hey, I'm worried about like all this attention you get. So I wrote this song yeah. called I okay. Know Places about like, hey, I know I know places we could hide. We could we could just... Hmm. Cool idea. My voice memos are embarrassing. I mean, not embarrassing enough. Oh, that's the one that we heard before. This sounds like a very sad song. Yeah, so we heard this before, and I really love the, the, the final product that came from this. I love how in the demo, 
That's basically just like a dark. She really also. Dark, like, it's it's dark, like um, she said. Sounds la- dark. And like ruin a love or whatever, and it's like you just whatever you know. Um, yeah. And then the chorus <laughs> just goes that major. How she like, tried to oh, explain oh, that. Cool. <laughs> It'd be like. Mm, st- mm, st- yeah. <laughs> like very like beat. Now I'm just making weird. It it must not be easy for the producer to understand what she actually wants. What we ended up with was I I kind of was just like we need to just kind of make it sound a little bit like a spy movie in a weird way in the verses like I wanted the choruses to just well okay but in the verses I wanted to play around with different rhythms and um, we ended up in a really good place with that I'm so happy that it sounds like the urgency that it sings about and I will go ahead and play it for you now. So we heard this before. It sounds amazing, I think. Like the echo on it, love it. And the different rhythm. Acoustically, it sounds a lot darker than this version. And the riff sometimes reminds me of Starboy by The Weeknd. Even though this is probably older than uh, Starboy. Yeah, they're nodding too, so... Yeah, okay. So what's next? So the next one I'm going to talk to you about, I actually did with um, Imogen Deep. Who's that? I don't know a lot of these guys. She said, why don't you come out to my studio? It's actually where I live, too. So before that, I had gotten an idea that I thought would be perfect for us to to write. I had this metaphor no. in my head about like being in this house and there's been a drought, but you feel like there's a storm coming. And so instead of trying to block out the storm, you like punch a hole in the roof and just let all the rain come in and when you wake up in the morning it's washed away everything that used to hurt you mm. and then you're clean man so the coolest thing about imogen for me was that she had it, there was no one else in the studio there was no assistant there was no engineer it was her doing everything wow there's this hook in the song the main musical hook is this tune percussion called an imbira and then she used these things called called boom whackers which are tuned percussion which i'm going to show you videos of both because I had to video it. Oh, wow. That's unique. This is the Imbira. I've never seen something like, something like that. Some kind of stringed instrument, too. Seemed like. Are these tubes so that have pitch, too? Like- I mean, every sound has pitch, but it fits in. I thought that she did some kind of effect to her voice to make it sound like that and she doesn't wow trying so hard to remain some kind of level of like unaffected in the way that like british people feel comfortable around (laughs) (laughs) so i was like i was like take your hands off your face take them off your face take them off your face put them away holster that and the full thing was nine hours and then she sent me the mix the next Day. Nine hours to finish the full song. Mm. Interesting sound. Mm. So the last song that uh, I'm going to talk to you about is Shake It Off, 1989. Shake It Off, okay. A, a celebration. Yeah, it sounds like a celebration song too, Shake It Off. I'm very well aware of like what everyone says about me. Every single thing. And mm-hmm. the difference between now and three years ago is I honestly don't care anymore. It's just like... It's, it's, and life is much better that way. And of course. I, I, I want it to start off, and the second the song starts... I want it to be the song where, like, if it's played at a wedding and there's this one girl who hasn't danced all night at the reception, um, all her friends come over and, and they're like, you have to dance, come on, you have to dance on this one. That's- well, she succeeded in that with this song. Can try to play that? There's one thing that I have always said to Max is, like, I don't like horns. Hmm. I love horns. I love the sound of horns and cinematic music. Maybe not in that type of music i don't know it would be unique though don't do that and he's like oh they did i I think this is cool i'm like no it's not cool and where are your chorus chords because that you're just playing three chords over and over again and i can't make a chorus out of them and then all of a sudden there was this moment 
where I thought of the whole chorus. And it was over the chords that I had just told him are not chorus chords, yeah. which is a ridiculous thing to say. Shake it ah, uh, shake it ah. Uh. Ooh, 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 ooh. Listen to this, listen to this. Um, look, uh, uh, cause the haters gonna, high five. High high five. And it sounds like a chorus. Yeah. So. How she recorded that? that. happened. <laughs> so oh yeah, so the Mellotron, he then replaced it in Sweden. He went to Sweden. He found he got a real horn section. Oh, he did. This is me and Shellback creating the stomping sound that you hear throughout this song. Actually, man, imagine. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, though. Ba, 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 ba. And we almost wanted it to sound kind of bad. We didn't mm -hmm. want it to sound like professional, like it was a group of great singers doing it. On purpose, to actually provoke the thought more of the, like, haters. Wait, are these the horns? No, right? It is some kind of horn, yeah. I never thought about it that way. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. This turnout is unbelievable. I cannot believe all of you are in this room right now. Taylor, that was spectacular. I feel really bad for whoever's next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool. That was amazingly inspiring. That was such a breath of fresh air. Thank you. <laughs> so as producers you might and not know this, but music in engineers. To be accepted into the PE wing, you have to accumulate a certain amount of credits is e either a producer or an engineer. And you've done that. So Taylor, we you would like to say congratulations and welcome and officially induct you into Nashville as producers and engineers. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So she's officially a producer. Now she feels good. told me that before. <laughs> I wouldn't have been so nervous. <laughs> the number one feeling I felt in the whole relationship was anxiety. Um, because it's not a good sign. It felt very fragile. Relationships can be very solid, and that's kind of what you hope for. But that's not always what you get. And um, definitely it doesn't not. mean that it's not special. So this is a song that I wrote with Jack Antonoff, and it's called Out of the Woods. Oh, she plays Out of the Woods. Actually, okay. On a Yamaha grand piano. Looking at it now. Mmm, love that. It all seems so simple. I love the reverb on the voice here. Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods? Are we in the clear yet? Are we in the clear yet? In the clear yet? Good. Are we out of the woods yet? Okay. Are we cool how she changed it here and doesn't really say it all of the times. She skips to some, some of them. It sounds it better now. acoustically like that. Certainly on the piano with all the smoothness. We were bound to fall apart and fall back together. Two paper airplanes flying, flying, flying. And I remember thinking, are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods yet? Are we out of the woods? Are we in the clear yet? Are we in the clear yet? In the clear yet? Good. Does she play all those guitars that are standing there? All five of them? Probably not in this video. When the sun came up, you were looking at me. Good. I remember. Oh, that, that section was a lot more pushy, a lot more powerful. Woods, yeah. And this is, again, more breathy, softer, dropping a bit, a bit of the intensity. Are we in the clear, in the clear yet? Good. Okay. Really nice performance. Um, so I wanted to start with a song oh, that... Oh, she is going to play uh, these. Oh, it's I a Gibson. Actually, as kind of a response to... Um, in the last couple of years, the media have had a really wonderful fixation on kind of painting me as like the psycho serial killer. A wonderful girl. fixation. It's been awesome. Okay. I loved it. <laughs> Got a lot of inspiration because of it. This isn't fun for me. 
But then my second reaction ended up being like, let's play it. Hey, that's actually kind of a really interesting character they're writing about. Like, she let's jets build on this character. the world collecting men and then <laughs> locks them in her mansion and then she's crying in her marble bathtub surrounded by pearls. <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, I was like, I can use this. This is uh, called Blank Space. <laughs> <laughs> it's cool to know a bit of the backstory behind these songs because you don't listen to the songs like that. These mainstream songs. Where you been? I can show you incredible things. Magic, madness, heaven, sin. <laughs> Saw you there. Want to play? It sounds really good, actually, this, uh, this performance. I can make the bad guys good for a weekend. <laughs> Forever. Or it's gonna go down in flames. You can tell. You love the game. She played along with this one. Got a long list of ex lovers. They'll tell you I'm insane. I've got a blank space, baby. And, and I'll, I'll write, write your name. name. <laughs> she actually does it. Uh -huh. For uh -huh. the worst is uh -huh. yet to come. Really like this acoustic version of this song, man. Cause darling, I'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream, so it's gonna be forever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They tell you I'm insane. I love the players, and you love the game. But I've got a blank space, baby, and I'll write your name. <laughs> it's actually cool to do that. <laughs> Don't say I <laughs> blame the bad say I girl did here. Warn ya. Down in flames. Got a long list of ex-lovers. They'll tell, tell you I'm insane. Cause you know I love the players. And, and you love the game. Cause we and I'll write your name. <laughs> yeah, I like this. I like this performance. And the sound of the performance. Really good. This is called Wildest Dreams. She is going to play all these guitars. Cool looking guitar. Is it a Fender? Looks like it. It's not a Stratocaster or a Telecaster, I think. Oh, yeah. He's so bad, but he does it so bad. Something interesting about the guitar that she is uh, playing um, is that the audio cable goes like perpendicularly into the guitar, which makes it a bit awkward because it would break off more easily in most guitars or it's in the side of the guitar, like with uh, Gibsons and Epiphones or with a lot of Fenders like Stratocasters. It is diagonally into the guitar like here, but not perpendicular like this. You just gotta love, just, it's not really fully acoustic, but just having an artist playing and singing along with nothing else besides it, like just the guitar and her voice or just the piano and her voice. It's just something intimate about that. The culmination of years of hard work in the studio. Okay, this is something different. Picking a first single is really crucial and it's like the first thing that people are going to hear from this new project. She looks younger here or is it... Is she younger here? Is this older? The last couple of videos were from 
2015. It was just this moment where we knew this was it. It just it felt right, and you have to follow that. <laughs> yeah, she's definitely younger there. Nathan plays drums on our demos with a keyboard. I can do that too. It is cool because I cannot play the drums, but I do have my keyboard, which I can use for that. Song, so it's confusing. That's what that's what we want here. We're trying to confuse. We're trying to confuse. And confuse. <laughs> we listen to the the story of us and like, oh my god, oh my god, we just danced around the room and had a dance party. <laughs> Honestly, we we made this cool. album in a basement. Let's just be honest about it. I mean. Hasn't it always some kind of basement feeling? I think he's just a musical genius and he's such a legend. Wait, well, he played for the Rolling Stones? Did I heard that right? Things about the day at Capitol Studios and doing the live string session, which was my first time ever doing one of those. That must be pretty cool to experience for your own songs. Is this for her first album? I started playing this really simple, this really simple progression, and everyone else starts like joining in. It was a moment for me. Yeah. I'm, I'm writing a song and I can't even focus on anything <laughs> right now. I can't even like, walk up the steps. <laughs> uh, such as when I'm on stage sound checking. Now that's a passion. Oh, this song in my head is so it, good. It's a gift. Huddled in the corner, singing into my phone. A melody that's just gotten gotten into my head like for the next record man it doesn't matter like if i'm preparing for a record or if i'm about to put one out writing is just mm -hmm. a way of expressing I yourself and i write about the way that i'm living taylor was a producer if if i go back and listen to work tapes from early on taylor was hearing the production that's crazy with taylor it was everything trying to capture that brilliance as it was coming out of her Because she just was is a stream of consciousness, wow. and and this song um, was on Fearless, yes. right? Yeah, and she called me on a a Friday and said, "I need another song. Uh, can you write on Sunday?" And I was like, "Well, yeah." <laughs> when I hear the work tape, I hear the production and the the stop and, and the clap and she was hearing all that when she was when we were writing it i mean it's just it's amazing and so i was smart enough to stay out of the way and who is this because i don't know her some bmi studio there were no rules there was no formula i think that's what why she ended up just writing with me for a long time yeah i mean apparently she was a lot like i want to do this no rules right with the metronome going in the back <laughs> really good sub stuff. <laughs> was he with her like all of the times producing songs with her from the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> Did she do that? Starry eyes sparking on my darkest night. You loud enough? Yeah. That mic is incredible on you. Thank you. That's the baby yeah. baby mic. It's forever known as that. Baby baby. <laughs> I feel crazy. Oh night. All time and every day. Yeah, this is, that is not too long ago. That's from uh, Zane, that song. I mean, not that long ago. I mean, it's been out for uh, at least a couple of years. That's my dance move for when I two. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget to have fun when you're recording. I love the whole scene. Watch for them dance with no. <laughs> and then you go it's like a little, dolphin yeah. body roll. Yeah, like all, all the personality and character. I don't have either of those things. Yeah, yeah, that's what everyone says. Out. Taylor's great. She just has no personality or character. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Number one comment that I get on uh, my YouTube comments. And now she doesn't care anymore, which is good. Don't let it get to you. And use it as inspiration. Chain round my neck. Chain round my neck. Yes. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> Actually. Oh, are we going to listen to the final product of this song? I assume. My castle crumbled over. Yep. Hmm, interesting. Ah, I love this background vocal. Mm 
Mm. Panning the, the low sound there, the thin synthesizer sound. Is this an official lyrics video of this uh, of this song? Because it's cool how they did this. Nice. Uh, it was the Reputation Tour that I reacted to now that I see it. So if you haven't seen my reaction to that, check out the video and the links in the description down below. The making of a song. Gorgeous. Okay. Oh, love the guitar. This is also from the Reputation Tour that, that we saw, or that I saw. You don't see often an artist actually in the process of making a song. We see her thinking, we see her trying, which is interesting to see because there is so much more going on behind the scenes than you actually know. We only hear the final product or see the final product or most of us do. So imagine somebody being with her all of the time, experiencing all of the time how she writes songs or seeing the moments that she is busy writing songs. Are they getting tired of like all the trying or the amount of times that they heard her sing? Or is it like more inspiring hearing that? It's interesting, I think. Searching. I get it, I get it. Moment of no inspiration. A lot of repeating. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is so relatable. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Somebody must have done that. You should take it as a compliment. At night or early in the morning. Like the hat. He's in the club doing I don't know why. He's so cool, I hate. It. <laughs> It is so relatable, not not only for writing songs, but also like when you're uh, learning how to play or sing a song and trying it and be wrong and be wrong again and be wrong again. And it's it's nice to see like you see actually see the slight frustration because you're like breathing when you mess up. You're like and again. <laughs> And again, and it's very relatable. And I'm so curious. Again. <laughs> Got drunk and made fun of the way you talk. I don't know who this guy is in the room. I mean, I don't know. They probably mentioned his name sometime before, but I don't recognize him from uh, the folklore, for example. And you're so cool, it makes me hate you so much. I hate you so much. <laughs> hate you so much and she looks at him <laughs> yeah here try it okay oh this is the actual uh, finished song I don't remember is this one of the songs that she brought acoustically on her reputation tour that I watched I should I should watch it back I should watch it again but <laughs> Who is this about, actually? She didn't tell us that. I mean, she doesn't have to. But... Okay. Wait, they said when it was, right? Oh, November 10, but not the year. Next song, what's the next? That she's going to explain, I did something bad. I don't know if I know this one. Just a narcissist, but they love me. So I play my 
It is crazy how she can hear the final product basically already from this. Just two octave notes on piano. Some clav clavicimbal. A bit of different sounds here. Okay, the feeling of doing something bad that feels good. Makes sense. They say I did something bad. <laughs> I think it's a good melody for the voice, but I don't think I know the song, so I'm curious how this turned out. I think it might be really good, actually. Over and over and over again, if I could, or whatever. Yeah, you like that. Yeah, I <laughs> whatever. Over and over and over again, if I, if I could. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Synthesizers can be so much fun. <laughs> Is there something wrong with me that I actually really like that? I mean, you have that a lot, like... Man, like, dude, how, how can you hear that and think like, Oh, that is what we need. Man. So stupid. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of fun though. <laughs> it's a lot of trying though. I mean, <laughs> it sounds ridiculous, but I mean, all the things you can do with it. Ra, 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 ra. Let me up. Mm. Oh my god That sound on the keyboard was crazy What an idea mm. Love the echo On the guitar I think most of these songs were also on the Reputation Tour concert, but the last one I didn't recognize, even though it's a very unique sound. Like seeing the 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 her room and the studio with all the hangers for the guitars makes me think I should do that here too. Like just hang my, all my guitars right here on the walls instead of setting them up here. It's a process of thinking together there. Love that. Can you ha can we have it be like like lots of vocals like like um like lots of people singing the pre so they can start saying sa loot to me like I Man, it's one thing for her to know what she wants and it's another thing to understand her what understand what she wants. So the guys from the studio also have this talent of being able to understand what she says, what she means. It is cool to see the process unfolding, like evolving in the studio and how they actually recorded all of this because you have to think about it. Really like all the bass and percussion there, and the drums. Man, it's a Steinway and Sons, this piano. That's not a cheap piano. Your love is a secret, I'm hoping, dreaming, dying to keep. <laughs> Look at her headphones. They're the same as mine. It's a very much used uh, headphone actually, the AT, uh, I don't remember the number of it, but yeah, I see this headphone a lot actually, and I love this headphone too, the audio quality of it is like top notch, I think, 
uh, for its price. I mean, for what we use it. Mine is peeling off like all the way, basically, but it still sounds awesome. Your love is a secret, I'm hoping Man, she's constantly like, constantly like singing whilst holding her own phone towards her. Okay, so this is the um, final version of the song. But I recognize this song though. Okay, another song, Getaway Car. This <laughs> sounds interesting. <laughs> like the piano riff there. Everyone tried that. Don't pretend. Don't, don't pretend it's such. I like that. Huh? Don't pretend it's such a mist. The timing of it. Pretend it's such a mystery. Think about the place where you never saw me riding in a getaway. Sounds good. Yeah, man. She must have a uh, a lot of storage on her phone or on a, a hard disk, a hard drive, because. All these videos. That is so cool. I never s searched like how you do that. How, how that works. Okay, what's next? What's next? Are they gonna do all the songs of this you album? Like me for me. Can I have that again? Delicate, delicate, this delicate. For the best. My reputation's never been worse, so you must like me for me. Times I wonder if some. Sometimes I wonder when you sleep. Yeah, that's kind of tricky. Sometimes it is tricky to s to sing certain lines on on their own without the music being there. So imagine how it is writing it that writing it that way. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> He's balancing that. What is that? Okay, what's next? Don't blame me. Okay. Is this a piano in the in the in the studio itself? I assume it is. But I want it to sound kind of like religious. She wants it to sound religious. Hmm. What does she mean by it has to sound religious? Man, she's really documenting the whole process of, of creating. Gang vocals. Far, far away. <laughs> oh, is this a stand with lyrics that we see here in the front? Ooh. Yeah, we don't hear her like belting that high often. Sounds good though, I think. Forgiveness, hold it, is a nice thing to do. Yes. <laughs> yes. This is why I can't have nights. <laughs> it is so important to have fun in the studio and this whole process. <laughs> because. And being silly sometimes because that that's part of it if you don't enjoy that then why are you doing that a pad of like a boys choir being like oh <laughs> well, she's not an opera singer but i mean <laughs> oh my god yeah yep 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 but five octaves higher than that yes that is the one <laughs> Again, she hears something that she thinks will fit it already. I was thinking that she would hit, hit a full chord in that, so we have a whole choir sound. <laughs> Trial and error. With our children's choir, we've decided that we need bells. Two so. bells would be... Yeah. Bells. Yeah. When I record something, it's mostly like trial and error, like using something that you think will 
work, but there are so many different kind of sounds that it's sometimes hard to decide because there are so many options. Yes. That... Do I have to hold... Hold on, I had to flip this camera. <laughs> <laughs> it just doesn't know what's happening. So you kind of have to like flip it to the side and then push record. You got that, people? That's how you use a cell phone. Back like then. <laughs> I'm turning on my party shoes for vocals. What? We've never really gotten a good take without them, have we? Tiny knob is volume. Shoes on. This has been your, uh, your official studio tour. We're Dead good. Tooth Antonoff. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Didn't hear the, the, the final product, but... I mean, not in this video. Oh, who's this? Hello. Okay, it's happened. We're in business. <laughs> Do you always keep instruments near your bed in case inspiration strikes? Um, yeah, Well, I have probably. a piano near me all the time. Um, and I always have a good... Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Where were you the moment inspiration struck? I was in Nashville. I got out of bed. I think it was really late at night. She knows. Okay, so I have this idea that's like... Obviously, I don't know the verse, whatever yet, but I have a pretty cool, really simple, beautiful chorus idea called Lover. I've been thinking for years, God, it would just be so great to have like a song that people who are in love would want to dance to. The last two people on a dance floor at 3 a.m. <laughs> yeah. What did you have in your mind? Was it the title? Was it a lyric? Was it a melody? It was, can I go where you go? Can we always be this close? I wanted the chorus to be these like really simple existential questions that we ask ourselves when we're in love. Can I go where you go? Is such a heavy thing to ask somebody. When did you hit upon the word lover? We're calling each other lover, like I've never done that, but I've always loved it in the context of poetry or song. It's a polarizing word. Well, anything I do is polarizing, so. <laughs> so how much of the song did you get done that night at the piano in Nashville? The whole thing. Whoa. Oh my God. She sent me that voice note, whether it's a whole song or just a, a little thing from her, I'm always, I sort of get this big jolt and I listen and I block out the whole world for a minute. I was like, get on a plane. <laughs> Crazy. Throw Duty to, to do it right. You're my, 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 my lover. We're all three of us are just in that process together. We're just like, yeah. oh, like it's just fun. We're fully, fully acting on impulse. And we're acting on like intuition and we're acting on like excitement. I don't really know what the video is right now because it's not really synced, I think, with the, um, with the audio. There's audio playing from people speaking, but it's not what we see. The bass line is actually the hook. It's not a true Paul bass, though. It's not a true Paul bass at all, but I, it's better at that Paul thump than... Bum, 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 bum. So that is the bass. the bass in the studio. I'm like obsessively going over, over every lyric and making sure that's what I want the final lyric to be. Tell if you uh, if you see this, can you explain to me why this video is still here whilst there's another video uh, playing? I think the audio is somehow like behind on the video. I think this is edited a bit a, a bit wrong. <laughs> It's hard for me to concentrate here with um, with this going on. I'm, I'm trying just to listen, but... Dream calluses. You can't see them, probably. But they're all... It's And, you know, I have some from, like, just changing strings and not being very good at it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, some where, like, you know, you don't... You're, like, tuning, 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 pop, ow. Are these some of the... Um... I got the horses in the bag. The debt I owe oh, got to sell my soul. I can't say no, no. I can't Are say no. Mine was the deal. Yeah, Mine I think the audio through. is over, it's but the video is still out. going somehow. And then, yeah, we we oh, this we finished is, this song pretty much. And this is correct again. That's like 90% of it. Um, we even managed to have lunch and dinner at the same time. She was writing all the words and all the melody. I, I honestly Emo didn't Jun write Heap. the words. Okay, the so she's the British one. She's such Ryan. a great she's okay. ridiculous songwriter. She's, she's a savant, I think. I mean, it goes beyond talented. She sent me voice memos in the morning. With Taylor, you function more as an editor. She kind of almost doesn't need you in the room, but 
For production, I think she is when she really relies on. In 2019, Taylor Swift announced plans to re-record her first six albums, the projects huh. that made her a star. That's interesting. Oh, she actually did this. In the music industry, royalties derived from master recordings are one of the biggest ways to earn money from a song or album. However, Taylor okay. would receive only a certain percentage of the royalties from that licensing deal given her initial contract with Big Machine. In 2018, oh. Taylor's deal with Big Machine Records ended and she joined Universal Music Group. Her first six albums were still controlled by her old label. Oh. Oh, Since that makes Big sense. Machine, Taylor has refused to allow songs from her original six albums to be licensed for movies, TV shows, video games, and more for this reason. Scooter Braun's Ithaca Holdings acquired Big Machine Label Group and all of its recorded music assets, including Taylor's for her six albums. Taylor claiming she was never given the opportunity to purchase her master recordings before he sold them. So during an oh, August wow. 2019 interview with CBS This Morning, Taylor announced a plan re recording her first six albums. That's crazy. She'll have creative control over how her music is used and earn a larger percentage of the sales of her music. But buyers will have to license, stream, or buy the re-recorded version. It's also about owning her life's work and the song she wrote that made her a household name. Yeah, of course. I get that. Taylor's public battle over the ownership of her mass recordings has provided an invaluable lesson to the next generation of artists when it comes to the importance of owning one's creative property and turning her into an advocate for artists' rights in the process. That's something different, but it's also a process of songwriting and music production. So it's interesting to see this. I think that's basically it. Yeah. All right. So that was the whole video, man. Wow, that was quite a long video, but actually pretty interesting to see. It's cool that she has all these recordings from on her phone, basically, or another camera just to 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 document this process writing producing and such very interesting tell i hope uh, you enjoyed it um like i said it was kind of strange that part just not the last five to six minutes but before that those 10 minutes somewhat like that i think were like not synced music uh, or the audio and the video so i don't know if, if that's something a mistake or so but that was kind of confusing. All the rest I really enjoyed. Like I said, I will post this on Patreon in its full uh, uncut reaction. And then afterwards, a couple of weeks later, I will definitely uh, cut it up for YouTube a bit so that it's not two and a half hours long. I don't know, like an hour maybe and see if that's a bit more... Um, watchable for everybody so guys i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to subscribe like and share the video also don't forget to check out some of my other reaction videos i also have music videos and tutorials for you guys to check out so thank you very much and see you guys next time bye And thank you so much, man, for like usual. I, so I don't really know um, what tell is. Oh, my God. Why can't I remember this band? Oh, 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 oh. Come on. It's a it's a uh, very or there's not. The, but uh, this I really see the, um, the, the, the like from like was it like the. Um, uh and and uh uh it uh, uh uh um um so uh yeah um right